Dub World, it is a beautiful, warm Florida day, and it is maintenance time. Time to do some oil changes on the vehicles. And right now I'm underneath the Eurovan camper, about to take off the metal plate here, so I can access everything. And I uh, wanted to share something with you. If you've never worked on a VR6 Volkswagen before, might not be familiar that they use a paper cartridge like this is I typically buy my filters from Volkswagen and I was looking online and I saw this EcoGuard I don't know much about it never used one before it had good reviews and I saw that it came with a crush washer so I said hmm dare I give it a shot so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do an oil change. I'm going to use this filter and washer and let's hope it doesn't leak. Um, and I'll let you know. So these are held on by four 13 millimeter bolts. Got one there, one there, then on the other side. There is a clip up here that once you take those bolts out it's supposed to drop down and hold on to this and not fall on you and then there's also two 10 millimeter bolts in the back here those brackets right there is where this plate goes in it should drop down and you should be able to pull this whole pan forward uh, these parts right here are your fan resistors if you ever have a problem with your radiator fan chances are these may be the culprit right there super easy to replace as you see completely accessible from underneath the bumper but you're going to want to take off that 10 millimeter there and the 10 millimeter over here first before you get going and that thing uh, make things a little bit easier for you once you get the two 10 millimeter nuts off, the pan is gonna drop down a little bit. Um, it's gonna free itself from the mounting points. You can see right here. That's a little bright in the back, so I apologize. It's gonna drop down from those, and it's gonna be free in order for you to be able to remove it from the slots here. So go ahead and remove your 13 millimeter four bolts there and there and as you're taking these out you want to make sure in advance that your safety clip right there is engaged properly because if not this pan's going to fall down and hit you in the face so what i would do is this before you take the very last one out i would make sure you push this up you hear the pan just wanted to fall so that it locks in place. Then you're gonna to wanna to get your one hand in here, hold it up, push the clip out of the way, push this pan up, and then let it down. Well, as soon as I took that last bolt out, the clip came off and this pan fell down or started to fall down. I caught it though. All right, so I've released the clip, pulling this down, you pull it forward. As you can see it's very tricky with one hand. So I've got to put the camera down so I can take it out. The pan is not super heavy, but it's a pretty good solid piece of steel. As you can see, the back have hooks on them. That's why you really need two hands to get it out so you can bounce it and get that hook right here out of the frame of the vehicle. So once you get your pan down, just get it out of the way, and then you can start working on your oil. I forgot to mention, if you don't want to get dirty, it's a good time to put your gloves on. Haha. <laughs> so anyways, once you get that pan off, it'll give you a chance to get a look at your van, see what's going on underneath here. AC compressor, alternator, there's your housing for your filter cartridge. Just, you wanna check around, inspect, see if you see any leaks, anything that looks funny, out of place, damaged, good 
opportunity to look at your belt, see if there's any micro cracks. This one I replaced not too long ago. Same thing with the alternator, which is another video. AC lines. Um, I didn't shoot a video for it, but I also replaced these little isolator mount bushings here for this uh, air pump. They were all broken. You could buy these. Pretty simple to do. Check your connections, vacuum lines. That's something I found when I first got this camper. Better to do it now than be broken down on the side of the road. This does make for a messy oil change. So you wanna make sure you've got your ground protected and also your oil pan. This right here is an eight millimeter. And this is what my drain plug is. All right, so on the left side is the original crush washer. On the right is the new one that comes with this oil filter kit. As you can see, it's skinnier. Inside diameter looks like it's the same. We'll see if it fits on. It does. I don't think there's going to be any issue. It looks like it should work but hopefully we don't have any leaks when it comes time to take off the or take out the oil filter uh, i mentioned earlier you can use an adjustable wrench if you don't have an adjustable wrench that's large enough you're going to need a 36 millimeter socket to get that off which if you've got air-cooled volkswagens you probably have a 36 millimeter socket 36 millimeter. Check it out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these oil changes can be quite messy. So I would recommend that you slowly loosen this and just let it start dripping. So that you don't have a giant rush of oil coming out. Of course, it's totally up to you. If you want to have the Niagara Falls of oil, have at it. Go ahead and take it off all the way. All right, so I decided to unscrew it here and let it come out a little bit more. So there's your cartridge and your housing. Now it's time to put on the new one. Okay, so. Once you get your old filter out, it actually snaps in right in this area here. And there's an O-ring right here that needs to come out and be replaced. So make sure whatever you do, if you're changing your oil, that you put the new O-ring on here and then rub it with a little bit of new oil before you put everything back together. So here's the oil O-ring coming off. that it sits in and ready to put the new one in. You want to stretch the new ring over and make sure it's seated correctly in here. If it's not seated correctly, it's going to leak. You want to make sure you get the correct filter. Some of the filters have this, some do not. Holes are two different sizes. But you just take the filter stick it in there and it snaps into place. So when you pick it up, it's attached. It does move freely, but it is attached. Now you're ready to put it back in. Now, before you get ready to put this in, you're gonna to wanna to put some new oil on the O-ring. That's gonna help it go in smoothly after you do that you're going to put the cartridge in make sure it's lined up and you're going to start screwing it in if it's nice and smooth like that you know you threaded it correctly so what you're going to do is you're going to tighten this down until this lip is all the way flush with here so you're hand tightening this when you get it down to the end here it's going to be pretty stiff that o-ring is still showing up that's when you need to get your wrench on there and 
you're gonna need to tighten it. Just tighten it slowly. You want that O-ring to be drawn in there. That's why it's really important to have the oil on it. And all you're doing is getting this in until it's flush. That's it. So you just snug it down so that this is completely level. You want to make sure that you know, your o-ring didn't pop up it's not caught in there it's not torn um, that's something you should be checking when you're putting it in and that's why it's important to make sure it's lubricated properly so it doesn't get pulled but again just tighten this up so that it's snug there and get ready to fill your oil so this is a 2001 euro van with the 201 horsepower VR6 engine uses 5.8 quarts of oil I'm using Mobile One synthetic right now. Um, this is what I use in the van. Been happy with it. Well, there's a lot of debate with oil, so we won't get into that. Use whatever you like. Um, I would just say go with manufacturer's recommendation for viscosity and you should be fine. Don't underestimate the benefit of a good funnel. This one here, it's just a little uh, Walmart radiator funnel. Fits perfect for the Eurovan, sits right down in there. You don't have to hold it, holds itself and no spills. I normally start by putting about five and a half quarts of oil in the engine. Then I'll start it up and run it. I'll check underneath, make sure nothing's leaking. If there's nothing leaking, I'll take it off the ramps or jack stands, let it run for a little bit. Ideally, you'd like to, to get up to normal operating temperature, shut it off, wait a few minutes, and then check the oil top off as necessary. So when you go to put your protective plate back on but as soon as you get these back legs in if you push this pan all the way back you'll be able to do the latch up front and then you'll be able to start bolting it in I would recommend just to keep this from falling on you is to start by doing at least one of the front bolts and then you can move to the back and you'll have to lift this up in order to get um, get those studs to line up one of the things I want to warn you about when you're doing this job is just be careful in here. When this pan comes down, it's very close to your resistors. Um, it can damage them, it can break them, it can break the wires off. So just be very careful when you're working in here. Same thing with these connectors. Uh, obviously you don't want to hurt yourself either. But when you put the pan back together, you got to make sure that your catch stays out because it, this, you're going to need to shift it back and forth to make the holes line up. When I put this up, I didn't realize the catch had popped out and now it's sitting back in here. Um, so what needs to happen is all the bolts uh, on the side need to be loosened up. Catch needs to be pushed back in and then everything needs to be tightened up. But that's it. We're done. Thanks for... Uh, coming along for the ride and I'll see you next time on Dub World.